Now, 2 Timothy 3.16 is a popular Bible verse, and it's certainly been a spiritual anchor in my life. In it, Paul boldly declared that all of Scripture was God-breathed, making it the bedrock upon which a Christian can confidently build his or her life upon. In this video, we're going to be looking at four main points, spending only a minute or less on each one. The background story to this verse, what Paul meant when he said that all of Scripture was God-breathed, why Scripture is useful for teaching and rebuking, and why it's useful for correcting and training in righteousness. Now, as I've mentioned, I'm only going to be spending a minute or less on each point, so this video won't take long. And if, at the end of this video, you want to re-watch any of those four points, I'll provide chapters in the description down below whereby all you'll have to do is click on a link and it will take you immediately to the beginning of that point. The Apostle Paul wrote what's now known to us as 2 Timothy to a younger man named Timothy who would be Paul's successor after Paul's martyrdom. A great persecution had broken out against the church and Paul being one of the leading figures of the early church had been arrested by the Roman authorities, thrown into prison, and was awaiting a trial that would most certainly condemn him to death. So perhaps sensing that this might be his last form of communication with the younger Timothy, Paul poured out his heart in writing, informing Timothy the most important things that Timothy needed to know in order to be a faithful minister of the Word of God. Coinciding, however, with all of that were false teachers, wolves in sheep's clothing, who were deliberately driving a wedge between the early church and the scriptures, claiming that the scriptures, while they weren't really all sufficient, to be truly spiritually complete, people also needed the teachings of these false preachers at a cost, of course. First century version of TV evangelists. What did Paul mean when he said that all of Scripture was God-breathed? Well, we first need to ask, what did he even mean by all of Scripture? Since the New Testament hadn't been fully written and compiled yet, Paul was actually referring primarily to the Old Testament. Although, of course, yes, some of his own writings were at this time being viewed as Scripture, but nevertheless, Paul was really referring to the Old Testament here. And as modern 21st century Christians, do we hold the Old Testament in the same high regard as Paul did? If not, why not? Something to think about. When Paul said that all of Scripture was God-breathed, he was emphasizing to Timothy of Scripture's divine origins, that Scripture was the very Word of God, that it was the Word of God, God telling his people who he was and how he expected them to live. And thus, Timothy, to be a faithful minister of the Word of God, could not simply pick and choose what he liked and what he didn't like out of the Scripture. He had to take Scripture as a whole. Apparently, the false teachers, what they were doing was they were picking and choosing out of the Old Testament, homing in on the genealogies, which for whatever reason was very appealing to people back then, including Christians. But for someone like Timothy, all of Scripture had to be taken as a whole, which became a basis for the next two points. <gasps> By the way, this is Mindy, and as you can tell, she just loves her first Canadian winter, don't you? Hey. The late John Stott made a very strong case that the four terms, teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training, could be divided into creed and conduct, with teaching and rebuking being creed, the importance of having the correct beliefs, the importance of sound theology that the authoritativeness of Scripture gives one the ability to judge something as either being morally right or morally wrong. Hence the reason why the authoritativeness of Scripture is so often attacked. For example, it's becoming increasingly popular in certain church circles to hear people claim that they only want to be more like Jesus and they elevate the Gospels over the rest of Scripture. Yet, when you peel back all of that virtuous-sounding rhetoric, what you really discover is that these people well, they don't really want to be more like Jesus. Rather, they want Jesus to be more like them. Since in the Gospels, Jesus may not have specifically addressed a certain moral issue, whereas the rest of Scripture did, say in the areas of sexuality, well, it becomes increasingly convenient to claim that you only want to be more like Jesus and elevate the Gospels over the rest of Scripture. While teaching and rebuking are the creedal aspect of Scripture, Correcting and training in righteousness is the conduct side. You see, as important as the creedal aspect is, it alone is simply not enough unless we conduct our lives in a manner worthy of it. As long as we make the conscious decision that if this is how Scripture says that I must live, 
then I will choose to conduct my life accordingly. And as a word, training implies, it's no easy task. It requires discipline. It requires effort on a day-to-day -day basis. All scripture is God-breathed. God left nothing out. He's given us everything that we need to be spiritually fit and spiritually whole. We don't need to go looking elsewhere. Study the scriptures and conduct your life in a manner worthy of it. Oh, well, hey, Mindy says that she'd really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up, a like. And she also says, why not click on one of those other videos over there? Thanks so much. And we both hope to see you next time. Bye for now.